Okay, today we're going to do the top end section of our Polaris Parallel Twin 800cc. This one's a Ranger motor, but it's quite similar on the Razor and the Sportsman. Um, so some of them, uh, depending on the year, may or may not have the cam position sensor. Um, the oil filler tube is different on some uh, de again depending on what year um, but overall the basic layout of the motor is the same so we're going to start uh, with loading the piston uh, the second piston i've already loaded the first one uh, the other thing is i like to take our marvel mystery oil and load uh, lubricate our big end rod bearings and pins for that critical start off. I make a lot of point about that, but uh, can't overemphasize the uh, importance of lubrication before the pump gets filled and pressured up and all the air out of it and so forth. Um, I'm also going to lubricate the ring lands on both pistons, uh, little marble oil. Um, Helps. These are kind of tough, especially the oil scraper rings are so thin on this one. They're, they're they're kind of tough to get in the cylinder. And being this is one, you've got to load two cylinder, two pistons into the cylinder at the same time. Um, but one important factor to pay attention to is the orientation of the piston. You can see that arrow there. That's or exhaust point towards the exhaust and even you can see the EX uh, also indicating exhaust on this side so we'll load this one Some people will even uh, put a rag over the open, open cylinder here to keep uh, that clip in case it does fly loose, which can happen. I've been doing this a long time, so it's uh, something I'm kind of used to. make sure that your clip is fully seated and it's groove in the side of the piston here. Don't want to ever have that come out. It makes a mess of things. So, you see me spend quite a bit of time there but just want to make sure we don't have a clip come apart or come out once the engine's up and running. Okay, then we want to stagger our ring end gaps. I kind of start like a spiral staircase. Once I know where one is, then we move up. And I like to run my gaps on the exhaust or the intake rather side of the piston. Never line up. If you read, some of the piston manufacturers will enclose a little instruction on what I'm 
I'm speaking of, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. But anyway, uh, my experience has been just like a spiral staircase. You want your ring in gaps to never line up and always be offset. There's those. We've already done these. Again, we're going to be on the inside side because that's my preference. Now, something else to keep in mind is if you pull one apart, is look at your ring in gaps. see that one but if they're a dime size or bigger it's kind of the uh, rule thickness of a dime or wider then you need to address your ring pistons um, and also measure and look at your bore um, this one here I'm replacing just as a matter of, of rule um, I don't like putting used scored pistons on something that I've replaced the crankshaft and seals and done to torn apart gone through all this trouble so I like to start out with fresh pistons anyway our cylinders freshly honed also you want to look at your dowels make sure they're not messed up boogered up and they're in place there's two on the bottom two on the top and they correspond into the case and the head and that's to help line your cylinder up perfectly with the crank and keep any movement um, once it's under under stress and loading of the engine so I'm going to lube this up with some Marvel Mystery Oil Spread that around a little bit with your finger. You also notice a little bubble cut for loading these pistons. That's to help angle them up, slowly work them into the ring lines. I always make sure my cylinders are well lubricated. thing you don't want to forget is to install your new gasket. Try not to get anything on it. So see that uh, kind of line up our dowels. It won't sit flat normally there of a MLS type gasket although that's a single layer I'm also going to put a few drops of oil in my lifters to help those have some lubrication right off the bat for startup okay we want to look it over and make sure it's clean of course I've washed this one and it put the dial gauge in it so she's ready to go this can be a little tough. Uh, loading two pistons at the same time is always a little tough. I do them with hands, fingers. A little bit of a test. Pistons. Get a little of our marble oil in there. Now then.
Again, I've already taken the liberty of washing everything. There's our fresh head gasket. Surface is clean. Carefully set it on. Locks into the dowels. And we're good. Now let's see. Next we'll Six head bolts. You can see which ones have been out in the weather, which ones have enjoyed uh, the oil bath. And what I like to do is lubricate under our washers. Helps keep it true torque value and then of course lubricate our threads and brown ones believe it or not are the ones that were inside of the oil because this one didn't get an oil change often should have. All our bolt links are the same. The only real difference is staining from where they were. And our fuel rail bolt is in the way, so we'll move that. These are 12 point, doesn't take a special socket other than a 12 point socket. Torque on these in the book, I believe is 35 foot pounds, plus or minus four pounds, so effectively 39 foot pounds. And then that says also to wait a minute after that torque value is reached to give it another quarter turn. There is some stretch in these bolts, so I'm sure that's why they ask for the wait time and then re-establishing a quarter turn to load those rods, bolt rods, studs. Okay. After well, we're going to 
sneak up on her butt. these by yourself can be a little bit of a challenge because you get to hold one part of the motor while turning the wrench on the other but I've got my torque set right now at 25 foot-pounds like I said 35 plus 4 give or take foot-pounds is what the book says on Final torque plus, wait a minute, let it rest a minute after that value is achieved, and put another quarter turn to it. I'm sure it's because the bolts are so long. I'm just putting them down. I didn't even reach 25 yet. There's 25, so you might be able to hear that. I know I didn't go in proper sequence, but anyway, you get the idea, hopefully. Then I like to go over mine one more time just to make sure I've had my torque wrenches calibrated twice a year. Another spot on, but it never hurts just to re verify that you got all of them even. Now, we'll let that sit one minute. And then we'll put our quarter turn on there. While we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and install our dipstick. Yesterday I mentioned the uh, cam position sensor and the reason this machine was damaged was so there was no O-ring. That's vital, important. Anyway, another one that's vital that you need to check and verify is the dipstick tube. And the dipstick tube o ring is right here, this little dude right there. And you want to make sure when you look at it, it's above the surface of the tube on each side. If it doesn't protrude and it doesn't have a malleable, soft feel to it, it should be replaced. I've pulled a bunch of these motors apart and they were leaking profusely oil and it was because of that O-ring right there. It gotten hot, repeatedly flattened out, no longer sealing, letting oil come right by. Of course, we know what happens then. So anyway, this one's good. 
we're gonna put it in. Never hurts to have a little, a little lubrication on it as well. Don't like dry rings being shoved in. They will tear, roll. There we go. Feels good. looking for crow's foot on the bottom it's a bracket if you will it's got a little bend in it and holds the dipstick uh, I think you can see that right there but that holds our dipstick from losing its uh, seated position The way it's properly installed is with the bend on top, the surface where the bolt is flat. Okay, the phone rang, so I had to stop, uh, but here we are. I've gone back and re-established uh, our torque quarter turn final on top of the 38 foot-pounds that we put on the head bolts. Now, uh, finished up the dipstick here and uh, bolted that up. One thing that I might mention some uh, of these dipsticks will get hard to pull in and out even though they're unlatched. That's in the latch position, that's unlatched. But what happens over time is this bottom little ridge right here will kind of get mushroomed out and it doesn't want to go into the little ridge that's built into the dipstick right here that locks uh, with the rubber being expanded so if you have a dipstick that doesn't want to slide in you might want to look at it this one uh, now works good because I took a file and ever so gently knocked off the little mushroom that shape that it started to deform the bottom plastic piece here um, as you can see it swells that rubber so it doesn't hurt a thing to knock a little bit of that off but all I do is I pull everything back out of the way where I can get to it with the files very fine file and just go around that edge right there and helps it to load unload I try to make it as easy as possible to check the oil because that's one thing I want my engine's customers to be happy with it's an ease of, of doing this, checking that oil. Maintain good oil. Okay, I may talk too much and failed to mention earlier uh, on the head I had already gone through and checked my valve guides and valve guide seals um, off camera and I'm not the best uh, videographer that's, that's around so I'm a better mechanic than I am a videographer but anyway that was all done 
Um, it's a good idea. If you have a question about that, you can always leave me a message, email me, um, 686grizzly at gmail.com, and I'll send you pictures of what that looks like um, and how I go about it. But uh, we're going to move on now and focus on the cam position sensor and putting it in. Uh, that o-ring should sit up against that little shoulder right there. So, you hear that sound. It tells me that we seat it in there good. Fresh, malleable o-ring is going to do a job. Just the 18 volt Makita. Last thing is while we're on this side of the motor, it's going to be to load our oil filter. Now, one thing I do, especially on a new motor, is I'll take and put some fresh motor oil in the filter. What that does is, again, we're trying to help the pump out for those critical first few moments when the engine's cranked up. Um, you can pre-lube these machines. Uh, right here is a plug, and I'll try and get a better shot of that. But if you fill the orifices with oil as I've done, and then load your oil filter with oil and you can see it soaks quite quite rapidly into the fibers of the filter there always lubricate your o-ring so it doesn't stick to the motor and you can get it fairly tight now putting a pipe wrench or a torque wrench on this is way uncalled for you can do most everything as far as the tightening goes with your hands and dry hands so Get some of that oil off of my hands there. As you can see, it's. Uh, I'm even going to put a little bit more in it. Cuts down on that initial dry filter, trying to push oil through a dry filter. And it doesn't take long for it to absorb into those fibers, like I said. Anyway. tilt so we're not working against anything here. You can use a wrench if you want to, but I just do it with my hand. Okay, oil filter's on. This is all wrapped up. Basically, we're ready to start uh, the valve train. Now, let's see how that worked out. Yeah, pretty good. All right. Okay. Push rods. And I always check these. You can check them with a straight edge or a glass table, a surface that's flat and straight. Uh, Want to wash them and also blow them out and make sure that they're open, no debris or 
pieces of carbonized oil blocking these holes. Got to feed all the way to the top so our rocker arms don't run dry. But we'll load those into the lifters. And it's always a good idea to verify that you're in the lifter cups, which we are. And then lastly, we're gonna take our rocker arms which have needle bearings in here. And the service manual tells you to loop these. You can use marble oil or whatever. I typically will use a little bit of our leftover oil from loading our oil filter. Notice a groove bottom here. And that shoulder groove, whatever you want to call it, corresponds to the groove right here. So you can't really get these wrong as long as you put the push rod in the cup and center this over the valve stem. Okay. First D three H drive impact. I think that says like eighteen foot pounds of torque, but I've been using this three H drive impact for years on them and just again make sure that everything is in its groove bolt bottoms out we're done rods are in place. Pop the surface clean. Any oil. Now the last thing up here is going to be a fresh gasket. And again, you want to make sure that it's seated. They have these little guide tabs. There's one right there, so you can't really get it wrong. And then always make sure that it's seated flush in its groove. And that 
it protrudes. Now, you don't have to replace your gasket if it's protruding, but I've seen these things after a hot engine and abuse where they're so flat that they just did not stick up and it, it leaked. So, again, oil leaks want to be addressed primarily. This is your baffle under here. Uh, it's basically like a reed valve, uh, allows the crankcase ventilation out uh, and runs into your air box. Uh, but some people will take the reed out of it, the little metal plate, if you will, and or they'll take it apart, not knowing what's in it, and destroy the gasket. And there's what the gasket looks like. It's pretty, pretty simple, fits in there like so. But make sure the reed's in place. Don't run it without it. You won't be happy. There we go one more time. A little messy with that. Basically, get through this section. Always start with fingers before you put any tools to it. And I'm not going to spend any more time on this. There is one other thing that I didn't address in the bottom end video. By all means, if you like our video, have any questions, comments, you want something for me to address, I'd be glad to, but share the video and come back to it as you need. Um, I realize I'm not a great videographer as so many are nowadays. I didn't spend a lot of time in front of the camera. I like the action, so everything looks good. We'll put our injectors in here later. Uh, actually, I like to wait till the engine's back in the frame. And one last thing that I didn't do was the oil pump, or the water pump, rather. Do that right it's going to be a gasket, if you will. See the little lines in it that always corresponds to the lines in the impeller. And then it has a hard ceramic disc, if you will, face on it. And that's going to correspond over here on this one, uh, the part that stays with the motor that I covered in the bottom end video. But Work it on nice and straight. Color. Uh, it's got a not a round. It's got a flat side, not a D shape, but two flat sides. Keeps it uh, from spinning on the shaft. You can see it spring back for me. But let's see if I can get a little better video of that. self-locking nylon nut and it'll bottom out when it's fully seated and we're basically through with this part of it that Replace this gasket. It's a rubber preformed 
but again you always want to make sure that they stick up above the surface there and aren't below or flush with the surface that'll cause a leak and just make you have to go back and work on it some more which is what we try to cut down on enjoy the machine working on it, which is no fun. So, like I said, this is not a really torque environment, so I'm going to cut the video short. But if you like our video, please share it and let us know good, bad, and different. Hopefully, it helps somebody out out there. Thank you.